All right, we're recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another back to school webinar. I'm here with Laura Steinbrink and with my colleague Jenna. I'm Gabby from Buncee, and I'm so excited to see everyone here this evening. Uh, I am going to go ahead, I'll turn it over to Jenna just to say hello, and then I'll talk really briefly about the giveaway that we're doing during this session, actually. So, Jenna. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Jenna, also part of the Buncee community team. Um, super excited um, for Laura's presentation and to learn about some relationship building with Buncee. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Um, yes, I too. Uh, I'm really excited to be here this evening. Uh, for those of you that might not know me again, I'm Gabby, also from the Buncee community team. And um, I know, uh, yes, actually I see in the chat, uh, Linda is saying that I do have a blue colored Buncee shirt on and uh, that it is relatively new. And that's actually brings me to what I wanna talk about really quickly right now. I'm gonna share my screen and we are doing a giveaway. Um, so we are going to be giving away uh, some of these Buncee t-shirts. You can be just like me and have this blue Buncee eat, sleep, create shirt. Uh, so during this session um, or after, of course, if you want to make a Buncee about what you learned during this session. So if you want to make an example of maybe, um, you know, a way that you can build relationships with your students or between your students, if you wanted to make just uh, a Buncee recapping what you learned during the session, all of that is good. Please go ahead and do that. You can tweet it at us. You can tag at Buncee and then add the hashtag hashtag BTS with Buncee and tag three friends. If you do that, you will be entered for a chance to win one of these blue t-shirts. I believe we will have two lucky winners. So definitely if you want to get your hands on one of these, uh, I love them. They make me so happy. Blue is my favorite color. So uh, it's, they just make me sobby whenever I wear them. So if you want to uh, the chance to win one, definitely let us know what you learned, you know, create a Buncee and share it with us. We'd love to see it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and um, definitely we'll remind you of that uh, at the end as well. Um, but with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Laura. Uh, Laura, take it away. Awesome. And while I'm doing that, there is a question in the chat about MIE experts and Buncee with a free account. So um, if you want to type a response in there, I'll let you guys handle that one. Yes. Welcome, everyone. I am so excited to get to be here with all of you this evening. This is awesome. And I love the turnout. And I love that we're so international because that's one of my favorite things about Buncee is it's so very diverse and it has a reach that's far beyond what we normally would think. And I do also want to preface that I, I am in a room with a grandfather clock. So on the half hour and the quarter hour, we will hear it. So I apologize in advance and I might mute if it gets very loud, but I will try my best to power through my wonderful grandfather clock. I'm going to now share my screen. And if you all have questions, I think they'll be monitoring the chat. I will try to pop in periodically to do that, but I am Laura Steinbrink. I am a teacher in Missouri. I have been using Muncie for um, a couple of years. I don't remember how many, uh, not, a, not long. I'm a relatively new ambassador, but when I dive into a tool and I see all the possibilities that I can amplify student learning, I dive in with everything I have and Buncee is one of those tools. I love it because it is a one-stop shop for all my student needs. If you are new to Buncee, I do recommend you try it out. I do recommend that you find a, um, a way to do the trial, which I'm sure they have trials because I believe I started with a trial. It is an amazing tool and my high school students really like using it. If you teach high school or middle school and you're looking at it thinking, isn't this only for elementary? No, let me stop you there. It's not. It's for all students. And the thing I like the best about it is if you have learners, and we all do, who aren't super techie or comfortable using tech, regardless of their age. I have high school kids who are not comfortable using tech. It's easy for us to make assumptions that all kids now are born with a phone in their hand, a smartphone, and they're not. 
and they're not all techie, but they still love using Buncee because it levels that tech playing field for everyone. They can all jump right in and start using it. So I just need to get that little soapbox off my chest. I love Buncee for all you users. So, um, and there's another question I see in the chat. Okay, I can see the chat questions about badges. So I'm also going to let Buncee handle that while we get rocking with SEL building student relationships. And if you are new to SEL, social emotional learning, it is one of my pet projects that I study on my own. And I do everything I can to help students with social emotional learning and pro social skills because these are things they're going to need in the um, workforce and they need survival skills at home and at school and that social network once you hit high school and middle school is so tricky so i love helping students build those so they can have lasting relationships and good quality um, relationship skills for the workforce i am a teacher and a tech integration um, person in Missouri. I am on Twitter. You can follow me there at Steinbrink Laura. I also write a blog that's an a feed spot educational top 200 blog where I do mostly tech things, but not always. And it's either going to be tech or social emotional learning. Generally speaking, that's my two areas that I like to write about. And it is rockintheboat.com. That is my introduction, and I am ready to dive in. Educators, which I'm sure all of you are in some capacity an educator who are joining us tonight to learn more about Buncee, we have it, we've been having a tough couple years. Education during a pandemic is tough. It's tougher than normal, and normally there is stress involved in our lives. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of educator love for you all, because it is so hard during this pandemic to keep teaching our students. So we're going to take a wee bit of time for ourselves before we dive into how we can use Buncee and help students. Um, in a normal year, we have things that are expected of us, like testing. And that's stressful enough, but right now there's lots of fears for the um, pandemic and we have a lot of uncertainty and some of us are back in the classroom and we are doing a lot of cleaning and mask wearing <laughs> and trying to reach and help our students and that is tough. So I want, we are going to do a little bit of self-care um, for just a second. I'm going to go to the next slide. So yes, SEL for all of us, Linda is correct. So we need to have grace for ourselves as well as for others because this pandemic COVID-19 teaching is challenging. So I've made an, a little Buncee for fun. So you can see how I like to, I like to play on Buncee. And this is my uh, little Buncee back to school, um, help us out. We are struggling as educators. Gosh, guys, it is tough. And especially last year when some of us were at, um, we were, some of us were at home, some of us were at school, some of us quarantined. It's back and forth. Thank you, Linda. I have fun playing with Buncee, so there's going to be some of that on here. And if you guys have never played, just play with your, it's not just for students, it's for us. I do. I noodle around. That is so true. I love how, <laughs> I love how Marie always puts that. I like to noodle. And that is part of my social emotional self-help is um, creativity and creativity is not just with Buncee. If you like to go plant flowers, you can cre be creative outdoors as well, but I sure do like to create with Buncee. So that's one of my happy places. But as you all are back to school or still in school, um, be sure to take care of yourself. Your mental health and your physical health is very important. So I want to put that in the forefront. You all are having a tough time as well as I am. It's just not as easy as it um, used to be back in the day before we had a pandemic. 
And hello, welcome from Macedonia. So glad you could drop in. We are looking at some SEL for educators. So Tisha Poncio, a great friend of mine. Thank you, Claire. Um, she and I did a Buncey webinar um, last year, I want to say, for Back to School, Creative Beginnings, and we talked about her not-to-do list. Tisha is very, um, she always is very good about doing a not-to-do list for herself, and I love that idea, so now I adopt it. So make sure that in this busy pandemic teaching world that you make a not-to-do list for yourself things not to do, because that will help you stay focused on what you should be doing um, and things that will help you out and your physical and mental health, because that is so important. And teachers are leaving the profession like crazy right now. And it's, it's very sad. And we have a noble profession. And I admire every one of you who are in here. So take care of yourselves, make a list, make a buncy <laughs> of things that are important that you need to not do that like detract from the things that you really should be doing. So think about that. Yes, it is very important. I do take that seriously as I see, I mean, just teachers I work with every day and teachers that I'm around having a lot of struggles. Am I still on uh, my little, sh okay, it looks like it. All right, so one of the things I love to do is a cupcake recipe. This is one thing I uh, have been presenting at ISTE the last couple of years, teacher cupcakes. I know they're my favorite. I thought so, Lori, I'm glad you're in here. <laughs> I love having a recipe. So not only do you have a a not to do list, but I like to make a cupcake recipe. What do I need as an educator to help me be the best I can? Yes. So make yourself a cupcake recipe. And if you make it in a buncy, they have cute little cupcakes and you can add sprinkles. As you see, I did put some sprinkles down there. So add some sprinkles, figure out what your body needs and what your brain needs in order and your emotional situation. What do you need in order for you to make it through this school year? Uh, and don't forget to drink water and exercise. Those are very important, but everything else you need to tailor to um, help yourself. So sleep, um, drink water and exercise. But other than that, there's gonna be things that you know you need to fill your bucket. Okay, and there was my grandfather clock. Okay, another thing really fast are ways for you as an educator to stay connected. So here, you are very welcome. So here at Buncey, they have some amazing ways to stay connected. We have Buncey boards where we can all join together and do a project like we love to do the Bob Ross Buncey challenge. And we usually get together on Twitter with the hashtag and then we have a Buncey board we share out and everybody can add to it. That's a fun way to stay connected. But everyone, you all matter. So get connected with people. Yes, I love the Bob Ross challenge too. Check out the Buncey Ideas Lab. Lots of wonderful things are shared there because creativity does love company. So connect with us online through Buncey or however it works best for you. Social media is a great way. Here's some of my Bob Ross challenge. So if you ever wanna do the Bob Ross challenge, it is super fun. And we take a Bob Ross painting. He's an American painter. You can Google him. And then we try to recreate it with Buncey. It's as simple as that. It's um, not simple per se, but it is simple to participate. And we don't care um, if yours is amazing or just a nice try like mine, but it is super fun and relaxing. So if that fills your bucket, that's one thing you can do with us here at Buncey. We love to do that. I love being a part of that. Okay, now let's jump into SEL for students. So one of the big things that I like to do with my students, and some of these you're gonna think, how does this build a relationship? But I promise you it does, thank you. Um, obviously I created them on Buncee. 
And I use this for my non actual, my non Buncee um, SEL workshops to this slide in particular, because Buncee is a great way to do your slides, FYI, that's just a pro tip. So I like to talk to students about goal setting. And for John Hattie, that is one of the top five, usually it's around number three, and it's called self-reported grades, but it's really goal setting. Good, I'm glad that you were introduced to it. Bunzi is amazing. So if you're going to work with students on goal setting, you are gonna get to know them, just FYI. So this will help you build a relationship and the kids really enjoy it. So before you do a standard or a skill or whatever your content is, have students write it down and chart it. Encourage them all week to beat their goal. And then when you give the assessment, they chart their results and they should be able to see. And I have them chart every time we do a practice test. So you can use a platform like Quizzes or Kahoot or something like that if you want. And your kids can see that, okay, on this day, I started at a 20% because I didn't know anything yet, but my goal is an 80. And so we're gonna take a few more formatives and you go from there. I love to celebrate with my students, any of them who have made a 20% or higher achievement or whatever, it, look, if you're doing numbers, maybe you go up a number, celebrate with your kids. So Buncee has actually started creating some of these. So you don't even have to, there's templates available. But here, mine is pretty simple and I have kids create it themselves. Sometimes they screenshot a spreadsheet so they can have the spreadsheet look, but they don't have to, it can be totally creative and I let them do it themselves. But here's an example of how they might chart it. So I'm encouraging them to beat their goal all week. And guys, that's a big thing in SEL is goal setting. So this is one way you can have them track their own learning and take some of that responsibility. And that actually, <laughs> I know it may not sound like it, but it does help you build relationships as you help them goal set, which is a huge adult skill they might need later on. So here are some example templates that Buncee actually already has created for you. And you can use those. And I love the fact they have some that are for social and personal development and physical and school goals, because we need all kinds of goals in our life. And I love the one in yellow that has the action steps. That is another awesome thing, because just because a kid knows they want to be X, Y, or Z when they grow up, let's say I want to be a biologist but I don't have a clue what I have to do to become one. Action steps are important in high school, especially because sometimes it might be too late if they're counting on going to a certain college, but they forgot to see what the requirements were. And maybe they're a science class short. So always get them started setting goals. They should not rely on a school counselor to be the only person keeping track of what they're doing. So Buncee has awesome templates that you guys can just get your students to pick one out, or you can pick one out when you're creating an assignment in Buncee. But personal goals are also amazing, and that is one sneaky way to get to know your students. Have them set a personal goal. Another favorite way that I love for goal setting is a vision board. And this, yes, at any age, we should be doing it now. And if you talk to professionals of any standard industry standard or sports, they all set goals. They're not getting there by accident. They set goals and setting goals is big for our emotional health as well. So here's a fun way to sneak it in, a vision board. And Buncee has templates for that too. And I love it. I love the one. I love this one that looks like a bulletin board. That's one of my favorite. Yes, a vision board. So if you will use that with your students and then put it on a Buncee board, everybody can go check out everybody else's vision board and see what are we going to be focusing on. And you can tailor that to fit your class. It can be, you can have some personal goals, and some academic goals and some any kind of goals you want. Um, you are very well, hey, 
Michael's in the house. Hey, um, you guys, these, these templates are great, but you as a teacher can tailor it to, to whatever you want. So where it says add text and photos, you can have your students be as creative and have the categories broad, or you can just focus on academics and the school year, whatever you want. But I do encourage you to try out some of these vision boards. I like to do one a little differently with my high school, although now, now that I see these, I might switch. But I had high school students doing one kind of like this because it's career ready. And I want them to know what kind of courses they're going to need. What is the highest degree they are going to do? And sometimes counselors are like in a big school. I am in a very big district this year. We have 1,500 high school students. So, I mean, I, yes, there are bigger out there, but it's a fairly big district. And the counselors, they can't get to everybody and they can't manage every single kid if they haven't made an appointment and come to see them. So some are going to slip through the cracks. So I'd love to have kids be proactive. Hey, let's chart out. What do I want to be when I grow up? What is it going to take to get to that point? And can I do a little bit of research? So this is also a great research project, but it's also SEL and it's also going to help you get to know your students because um, who knew that, let's see, I have my, I used a fake, well, not a fake student. I used my cousin <laughs> when he was a student. He wanted to be a marine biologist, so he didn't know. We live in a landlocked state. There's no marine biologist nearby, so he had to do some research and get that going so that he would know what it would take to do what he wanted to do. We didn't even know marine biologists, but uh, you all are teachers. We know that we can actually now connect with just about any profession anywhere because of this wonderful thing called the internet and Zoom or Microsoft Teams or any of the other platforms you wanna use like Skype or even Google Meets. So have the kids think about it and you can even have guest speakers talk to your class about, yeah, I'm from this college or I'm from this high school. If you're maybe if you're an elementary, um, teacher, maybe a high school teacher can zoom in and talk to your kids about what they're going to need or counselors, but it's super fun to have them think, what am I going to need to do when I'm going to grow up? And another thing you can have even elementary students do, and Tisha is the one who built this for elementary students, is to have them do a portfolio like a resume and they can get in the habit of making those because we need to do that in high school. And I'm working with seniors now and helping them build a resume for the very first time. And I'm thinking, boy, if teachers before them had been using Buncee, they would have had this already. Yes, I agree. Buncee and Wakelet can work together to improve this. I usually have students use Wakelet to store a lot of their things for a digital portfolio. But Buncee can do that too, and Buncee and Wakelet can work together. And yes, building a resume, gosh, how much stuff are you going to find out about your kids that way? And it's academic, and you can use it in parent-teacher conferences, and students can walk their parents through it. Well, I, well, I've done this, and here's the skills I've mastered, and so forth. Especially if you're in a standards-based grading, boy, those skills, they can keep track on their Buncee resume. But you can call it wherever you want. Doesn't have to be resume. Okay, did it go? Hang on. Okay, I'm going back. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say somehow, okay, it's skipping around. That is interesting. So bear with me as I try to get it to, there we go. Nope. <laughs> It doesn't want me to show you this part. So with Buncee, you can have different slides for, I'm gonna, I don't know what's happening, that is weird. Okay, okay, fingers crossed, nope. So that's what it looks like. You can have title, skills, showcase, awards. You can have the, each slide could showcase something different, you can have pictures, um, their experience awards, 
is it on autoplay maybe i think yeah i think accidentally your timer got uh got hit if you yeah there you go i think you're right yeah, like, autoplay. Now suddenly yeah, i now i realize it's not a ghost <laughs> <laughs> i hit the auto thing okay now we know <laughs> okay so there you go so students could start a like maybe their first page could look like this they could put little photos or actually you could put Buncey man because he's super cute Anyway, they can list all their skills and, and elementary students can do this. They can have pictures, they can just type out things that they want, they can use illustrations from Buncey. And I know, I agree, Buncey Man is ready for any occasion, even Bob Ross challenge. Just saying, we should not right now because I'm busy, but maybe over Christmas we'll get that going experience and awards, all the things that students, maybe they get student of the month. Just think about anything that your kids might, ooh, I love that idea, Imelda. Let's go around the world using Buncey. Yes. So you can have a high school um, or middle school also build a portfolio or a resume. And this was one we were thinking of kind of as academic. So you could put things I can do would be your like I can statements, things we mastered, awards, volunteer work. Let me tell you, volunteer work is really good for kids to chart. And that will tell you so many things about them. They don't always think about volunteer work and how that really sets them apart from others. And they don't always even think about the things they do that really is a volunteer work. So have your students start thinking about that and brainstorming. If they don't, what can they do? What are their interests? Can they volunteer somewhere and get some volunteer work for their resume and some job shadowing skills, or maybe just find out if they really are interested in that? It is amazing. And sometimes your volunteer work can be just to help others. And that is a service that we don't give enough credit to sometimes because we get so busy in education with all of the things that we have to accomplish. So I love using Buncey too. It just makes my heart happy. But you can have you can have students put a column for their standards and skills mastered. Yes, good for the soul. And you can have them link their evidence. So that could go to different projects they've done, different Bunceys. Here comes my clock. But you can see all of the different ideas, ways you can use a resume or a portfolio. Oh, I love that idea. Buncey for educator moms. Yes, recipes. We do need that. That's a great idea. You can put um, links or images of resumes. We have a Tish and I did. We really went to town on that. We think that's super cool. So as I was preparing for this one, I was thrilled to see all the new things that Buncey has added. Student-led conference template, but they have portfolios in there and they have them specific. So you could build a Buncey full of things that they do at school. There's one for sports and clubs and they can add the information and have a one Buncey that has everything on it. Here are samples that I screenshot from the templates that you can now access. So there were so many awesome things. I just love the school year portfolio extracurriculars. They had different styles. So if your kid is older, you're the students you teach are not young, they have templates for those too. I love that it says hours total on this one here. <laughs> um, yes, you could do a COVID information Buncey board. That is true. And I don't actually know if there is one. I have not built one, but that's not a bad idea. Um, I loved there was a school year portfolio for different subjects. I included math and science here, art and music. So students could include, because you know with Buncey, you can upload files and you can up and you can create audio and video right there within it. 
Hey, my friend Rochelle, I do too. They have so many amazing, wonderful templates right now. I was so excited. And maybe I didn't sleep a lot because this was super exciting to see all the new templates. So I really encourage you all to explore them. And I am kind of going a little fast just because there's so much to cover. Gratitude. Okay, so we have looked at several things. So I hope you guys have some ideas going. Several ways that you can use Buncee to build these relationships with students kind of in a sneaky way. Because let me tell you, I teach high school and some of the more traditional ways of building, they get that in every single, yes, I gave Buncee the link. They do have it. Um, they can drop it in the chat and we'll probably share it out too. But yes, we'll drop that in the chat because I do have resources at the end of my slides that, um, for you all to access. Some are just straight up SEL. And then one is the white paper on SEL and um, creativity with Buncee and how it supports like in so many ways with the research, packed with research, y'all. Okay, back to gratitude. So getting to know students in sneaky ways because they get sometimes overwhelmed. Oh, I love that, yes. Virtual gratitude jar. I think I want to challenge my students to one of um, the Buncee 30 days of gratitude. And I will probably start in November because that is the time we do that. Well, you know what? Maybe I won't. I think I might do it in October because November we're off for some school for the um, Thanksgiving holiday. So I think I might do my 30 days of gratitude pretty quick. And I'm going to use Buncee so that students can, because I have high school students, they can take pictures off of Snapchat or wherever they normally um, have their pictures that they post, and they can add them to Buncee and upload. Because I do love the fact they can add audio, and they can even do little videos, and they can just put a picture of what they are thankful for. And this is a template I did find. And I do have the link to the gratitude jar um, that someone in the chat referenced. Oh yes, Lori wants to do that. So that is linked in here for you all. So here's like an example of how you might have kids do it. They can just either put text or pictures or audio or however. And you can be as specific or not <laughs> as you want. This is just mine I made last year so um what was oh research brain research so gratitude might sound like a i don't know it doesn't always get the serious treatment it deserves but let me tell you friends that gratitude is one of the biggest ways you can combat negativity in our brains so when we start Yes, I will. I can explain or we can explain the differences between Buncee and Canva in a little bit. But let me talk to you right now about gratitude. Gratitude will help you rewire the neural pathways in your brain from looking for negatives to looking for positives, and it'll help build new pathways. Because once you start only seeing negatives or you start hyper focusing on the negative things going on around you your brain starts to then only look for that and only see that which makes it super hard to get out of that spiral and since i teach high school and if you teach middle school and you know what even if you teach upper elementary you need to be aware of how the um that negativity and some of the horrific things our students have to go through, if we can help them turn around and be grateful and look for the positives, that might be the difference between an attempted suicide or an actual suicide and a kid that can actually start to function and see that there is hope. And I'm all about bringing my students hope because there are so many kids out there that have so many struggles that the last thing I want to do is not be able to help them with just that one little thing, because this is powerful. 
Gratitude is powerful and the brain science backs it up. It can totally rewire your brain. So I want you to consider that it seems maybe a little hokey or not like a serious thing. And you don't have to grade it, but you should have fun with it and allow your students to find ways to be grateful. I can't preach that enough. I just love the gratitude challenges or the awesome fun ways you can use Buncee for students to practice gratitude. But while you're doing that, you can practice other skills. You can have them explain things. They can create audio or video where they're talking about what they're grateful for. And whatever it is that your standard might be, you could weave in too if you have to do that. If you have no flexibility in order for you to be able to weave that in. Otherwise, if you have five minutes or so at the end of class, you can say, hey, now go update, update your gratitude challenge in Buncee or something like that. There's always that five minutes, right? So I want you all to consider that. It's a great way to get to know your kids because you can be like, oh, what is that a picture of? Oh, look at your grandma. She's so cute. Things like that. Gosh, that goes a long way toward building those relationships. Yes, <laughs> set an alarm to remind yourself. Okay, and you know what? There was new templates that I also found for SEL for students where you can share what you know. And I know these can be used in um, academics. So it's a great way to start show what you know or share what you know so that we can see what they know before we teach a unit. And I thought, oh my gosh, what cute little templates to use if they just wanna, hey, what do you already know about this? Can you tell me everything you already know here? Now, obviously don't Google it, but have them create just for a minute or two on a Buncee. It's like a great entrance ticket or exit ticket. And they have some of the cutest little templates. I am just about done and ready for questions. So at the end of my slide, I have the link for the Buncee that I, the white paper I wrote, where I give you all the research on how the activities in Buncee, creative activities in general, but specifically these with Buncee, um, can be used with SEL competencies. So if um, when we drop that link in there, that might be, is that that link above? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's somebody else's. Okay. So we'll drop the link for my Buncee presentation and you all can check out this white paper if you want so that if you need the research for how this is going to help with your classroom management and these, the social emotional learning for your students and your pro-social skills, it is in here. And Buncee has this on their blog, so I've linked it. And then I have, there we go. The presentation has now been dropped, so you all can grab that and look at it. And then here is a whole bunch of things that I use for my own SEL practice with students. So <laughs> yes, 27 and 28 are my resource pages. Okay, and if you aren't aware, Buncee also has, let me go over here to the toolkit. And I do have an extension that puts my tabs to sleep because I'm a person who has like a thousand tabs. I did close them just for today, so you all wouldn't have to see them all. But it's going to wake up and Buncee has a toolkit, an SEL toolkit that you can use and I was so happy when they built this. So it has a guide for social emotional learning. And if you just search the ideas lab, maybe type in SEL, um, it will give you everything you need to know and you can go through it, benefits. And then they have all kinds of different tools that they have created. So you can also just go to the ideas lab and type in SEL and I'm gonna wake the tab up. So here it comes. Type in SEL and then you can get inspired because these are from everyone. And I just love these about me portfolios. They are amazing. So that is my presentation. Now, do you all have any questions? 
I have done a lot of fast and furious talking. So now is your time to have me slow down and maybe say something again or ask anything you need. And I'm so thrilled that all of you came. That's when we have a drawing too, right? So don't forget to tweet out. Yes. Um, yeah, I definitely, I'll definitely just share that as a reminder again. Um, but that was amazing, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, this was such a great presentation. So many amazing ideas. Uh, and I know I've, I mean, I've been looking at the responses in the chat. This is, you know, it, it's really amazing to see everyone also really responding and saying, wow, it's a great idea. I can't wait to try this or I can't wait to do this. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, so I do see, uh, one, uh, what was your favorite, uh, what was your most successful Bunsy SEL activity that you've done with your kids, with your students? Oh, that is a great question, Ida. Okay. Most successful. Okay. So this is going to sound super funny. <laughs> oh, Hey, another former Missourian. I like that. <laughs> Yay. Former, former Missourian in the house. Okay. Um, this is going to sound funny and it's not necessarily an SEL activity when I came up with it, but let me tell you all, anything you have your students do with Buncee because of its creative nature turns out to be SEL for your students. So I had been using Buncee with my Spanish students because last year at a different district, I had one Spanish class that I taught. This year it's all English and last year I had one Spanish class and I would have them do non-linguistic representations. So they would create a picture and we would do different vocabulary words with the picture or they'd write a sentence. I could show them a picture on the board and they would write sentences and I would use Buncee for that. And I would have them create, oh, sometimes they, I might just even have them go in and create like a cartoon strip and where they could practice typing the dialogue in Spanish. And I would have a kid come in or these were juniors and they would come in and say, Miss Steinberg, it's been a tough day. Can we do Buncee today? I don't care what we do. Can it be on Buncee? So really it could have been anything, but I, yeah, any uh, comic strips were their favorite because they love to get the stickers. Gosh, somebody asked about my favorite sticker. So don't, yeah. don't underestimate the power of creativity when it comes to the end of the day and your class has been stressed all day because it can be powerful. Um, let me go back. There was a question about my favorite sticker. Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I do see. Yeah, it was um, a question. Do your, do your students have favorite stickers that they use, your high schoolers particularly? I, Buncee Man is always a favorite. <laughs> and sometimes high schoolers really love any of the dancing animated people. I think there is a sticker that does the worm, like there's a high school <laughs> yeah. boy or girl that usually ends up on everything we do. <laughs> so I'm going to say that's probably unofficially their favorite. I love it. Hey, that's any, any way to keep the fun in and keep that creativity right? and that fun and that engagement. Yeah. So absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, I think we're at time. Um, thank you everyone so much for joining in. If you do have questions, you can always reach out to us after. Um, yeah. And I do wanna share a quick reminder again about that giveaway. Um, so again, um, if you want to make a Buncee about what you've learned during this session, um, please share it with us. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Yes, um, share it with us, please. And uh, we will be picking two lucky winners. Again, um, make a Buncee, tweet it at us, tag at Buncee, uh, add the hashtag, uh, hashtag BTS with Buncee and tag three of your friends. If you do that, um, out of everyone that does that, we will be picking two lucky winners and you could win this Buncee shirt. <laughs> um, it's really fun. And, uh, and even if you don't win, it's a really fun way to just share what you've made and share what you've learned with others. So please uh, definitely be sure to do that. Share, you'll be entered to win a Buncee t-shirt. I'll go ahead and stop sharing and just say thank you again to Laura. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all of your ideas with us. This has been a really great presentation. Um, Jenna, did you wanna say uh, any final words? Yeah, um, no, thank you. Thank you, Laura, so much um, for sharing all of this. Um, it's, it's true. I mean, for middle school and high school, I can't imagine, you know, what teachers, you know, are going through with, you know, with the kids who are going through so much. Um, so teaching all these lifelong skills and being able to, you know, incorporate them in such a creative way is, is so important. So thank you.
Thank you. Absolutely. I'm so glad you all came. This was awesome. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it is so important to be building those relationships and maintaining them uh, now more than ever. Um, so yeah, yes. Laura, thank you. Um, yeah, did you have anything else? Oh, no, that's it. I'm just overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, Ida lived in Missouri. There's so much Missouri love in here. I love everyone. Even if you're not from Missouri or have never been there, it's all good. <laughs> this is cool. What a fun way to end a day. I am so happy you all showed up. This is great. And I'm so glad I got to come. I thank you for having yeah. me. This is amazing. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. And thank you everyone for joining in. Have a great rest of your evening, evening, rest of your day, rest of your morning. Um, but uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks so much. Good night. Bye, Good night. everyone. Bye.